Calibrating your joysticks just got a lot easier. Welcome back everyone, I'm Butterfix and today I want to show off a new update for the DualShock Tools website. So I made a video about this earlier as well and that was in version 2.1 and now we are in version 2.16. A lot has changed since my last video for version 2.1, including DualSense Edge support, which I am going to make a video about later. And in this video I want to show three other features that got added that I really enjoy. The first one is obvious, there is now an overlay here of a DualSense controller where you can test the buttons. On Gamepad Tester you can test whether the button presses, but you cannot see if it swipes. Here you can, with one finger or with two fingers. And another thing is you can test if the mute button works. However, one thing it does not show is how far you press the trigger. So it does change color gradually, but it doesn't show a percentage, which Gamepad Tester does. So I like this change, it's very simple, but there isn't much to it. The second one is in this joysticks info window. So here we have three tabs now, instead of just one and a checkbox to check the circularity. So if you want to check the circularity, we click on here and now we can see the colors. And if we click on normal, we don't have anything. This is new, it's 10x zoom. So here the center, you see a smaller circle inside. Now this is all zoomed in and it's very small. So for example, if I hold it to a side and I click on normal, you can see that it's actually just a very tiny amount. So don't freak out when you see this like jitter over the center because you will likely not even notice that in game. So this is practically centered as you can see. The 10x zoom is going to help when you want to fine tune your center point. In terms of the stick range, you don't really have much benefit of using this 10x zoom because the outer edge is not zoomed in. So this is the second feature that got added. And then for the third one, which is insane that this is now possible, the fine tuning menu got a complete overhaul and it's now controllable with the controller itself, with the buttons on the controller. So this is now just so much easier to work with. And you can see that it has a center fine tuning or a circularity fine tuning. So let's start with the centering. Here again, you can see this 10x zoom window. When I move the joystick, this blue window is lighting up wherever I move it. So this indicates which joystick I am moving at that time. If I wanna move the left joystick, I'm moving this one. And now I can use either the D-pad or the face buttons. I do recommend to keep show raw numbers enabled because then you can see exactly what you're changing. And you can also take a screenshot of this before you fine tune it in case you mess it up and you wanna go back to how it was before. And this goes the same to the Seer Clarity. You can screenshot these numbers, save them or write them down so you don't lose them. So now I press there with the button, but you can also just use the controllers. So now if I use D-pad up, I can bring the center up. And this may seem like a very big change, but again, this is 10x zoom. So this is only 0.04. If I click here on normal, you'll see that it's a very small change. So going back to the fine tuning, I want to change this back to how it was before. And another thing with this joystick is that it has TMR joysticks. You will notice with any magnetic joystick, that it has some interference or there's like some jitter. So any small movements or jitter that's normal. And I would say up until like 0.03, if you get even further deviation than that, then I would say yeah, maybe change the joystick around. In my experience, these types of numbers are normal and I don't really look twice if I see something like that. Now, if I see something that's like 0.06, yeah, then I change it because this is too far off. The numbers of the center point, they are quite sensitive and I prefer to have a smaller step size. So now if I press the D-pad down, I only lower the number by one instead of five. And similar, if I use left and right, it just goes with steps of one. Now, how do I go to the right stick? I just move it around and I let go and now the right window is highlighted. So that's all it takes for center calibration. This was already calibrated correctly, so there's not much to change, but we can click on done and we can see 
here, if I move it around, it doesn't say 0 0.04 anymore. It's perfectly centered. And now for the circularity on this one, this is something that I may have not explained properly in my previous video, because I saw a lot of people afterwards in Discord say like, oh, I got like a perfect circle and a very low percentage, like less than 2% probably. And I just want to say that that's not an optimal circle because you'll notice issues in games. So let me just demonstrate how that would look like. Because I specifically chose this controller because if I have a standard range calibration, I will have a very small circularity. As you can see here, I have 3.2 and the left one is a bit higher. That's 5.3. And the problem with this is with this 3.7 on the right side, I can't go to my fullest speed. And you can notice this in games. So for example, with racing games and especially Rocket League, if you want to air dribble, yeah, good luck. Because air dribble in Rocket League is gonna be a lot easier if you have a higher circularity because you're just moving a lot faster to the corner. Now that's one thing to keep in mind of. Other games where you will notice it is like fighting games, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, where if you have these combos where you need to hit a diagonal, you're less likely to hit a diagonal, but rather you might hit a cardinal direction like north or east if you want to hit northeast. So that's something. And for uh, first person shooters, if you have a very low sensitivity, it might feel very stiff to move the camera around or to move your character. Uh, one benefit in shooters is that you will have finer control over the recoil, but if you play shooters very competitively, whether that's Call of Duty or like a third person shooter like Fortnite, then you'll already have the muscle memory built up for a higher circularity, which is why it may feel stiff. If you can get used to that, you may get a better recoil handling, but I recommend to just keep it around like six to 8%. It's a bit higher than this, of course, like 3.5, but you won't have that stiff feeling that other controllers would have. So if you have a too low zero clarity, those are problems that you will encounter. So I'll show you how you can very easily with this new menu, increase your circularity. And just like the center fine tuning, you can use either the D-pad or the symbols. It's whatever you prefer. I think it's easier if you are calibrating the left joystick to use the symbols, and if you're calibrating the right joystick to use the D-pad. So here automatically you will always have a circularity check enabled, and it will reset upon changing a value. So like this, it resets. Or if I press R1, it also resets. So then you can kind of do a circle and reset again every single time. So that's something that I actually like to do. So now to change the values, if you move the left stick, the left window is highlighted and you calibrate the left window. If you move the right stick, the right one is highlighted. So in this case, I want to calibrate the right stick first. So I am going to push it all the way up and I wanna make sure that Rx is at zero and Ry is at one or minus one, I mean. So you can kind of imagine like a circle here for the Y axis, I need up and down arrow to increase or decrease the circularity. So that's what I'm gonna do. The step size is at 10, that's the default for the circularity. So I make sure it is at zero in RX and one in RY. And I just press like five times and that increases the range just slightly. So now I'm trying to get a circularity that's around six to 8%. I'm gonna do the same thing to the left. Ry is now at zero and Rx is at one because that's the x axis. So now again, I'm gonna press one, two, three, four, five. So now I'm gonna do the right side and I need to press the right D pad to increase the dead zone instead of the left. So make sure that Ry is at zero and one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So now I increase it in every direction five times and we can see what the circularity is now. It's still on the low side, so I'm gonna increase it by like three steps on every side. And one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. There we go. 
And now let's check for the calibration. This does look a lot better. The red may scare off people, but this is what you want to see. So I'm going to leave it at this. And the reason why I go both ways is that sometimes you will have a different range, whether you go clockwise or anti-clockwise. And I want to make sure that the range is good no matter what direction I rotate the joysticks. So the right joystick is now properly calibrated. It's not a perfect circle. It's not 0% and can go lower, but that's not what you want because it will mess you up in games. And even if you look at stock controllers that are just out of the box, they will always have a higher circularity, like even up to 14% at some point. It's a bit too high for my liking. I still prefer to have like six to 8%. And this does allow you to still use the controller for all the games that you're playing rather than that you're messing up your muscle memory by having a too low circularity and that you're just making some games unplayable with a perfect circle. So please don't aim for that. Get a bit higher outside of the circle and you'll be fine. So now let's do the left joystick. We can see here that this has around 5%. It has a bit more overshoot on the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is five on the top left and right side and I'll do just four on the bottom. And these are in steps of 10, so it's gonna be 50, 50, 50, and 40. So here, it's easier to use the symbols, so I'm gonna do that. So one, two, three, four, five. And for the left one, I'm gonna use square. One, two, three, four, five. And circle for the right side. One, two, three, four, five. And here, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, and now we have around 7%. If I go one direction or if I go both directions, I have 7.5. That's actually kind of convenient because this one is also around 7.4, 7.5. So I think this is a good zero clarity. It's actually conveniently very even. And again, don't worry about these reds. That's something that you want to have. So right now the center point was already fine. You can click on done and you can click save changes permanently. Again, make sure that you have screenshots ready. I am recording this, so I have the numbers that I had before, but this is already a very good circularity, so I don't really need to go back. And of course, uh, another thing that I should mention is don't push it up all the way. Like if I'm gonna force this on one side, especially with the magnetic joysticks, you will kind of force the circularity to be bad. Not only is that not representative of your in-game circularity because you're not gonna push it that incredibly hard. Like here, I can make it even worse, so to speak. So this is not a representative circularity. What you want is just light pressure, go around the edges, and there's that. And the other thing that it does is if you push incredibly hard is you're gonna damage the shaft of this thumb cap as well as the plastic rings that can be found if you take apart the DualSense right here. There are these plastic rings here which can also deform. Now you can order these, it's very cheap on AliExpress but if you push too hard, you will damage it. So that's also something to keep in mind of. So, as well as when you're calibrating the stick range and when you're checking the circularity, do it with a light pressure and also make sure that you rotate it in both directions. You want to make sure that when you're checking for a circularity, the circularity is good in every direction. So if I rotate it only on the right side, I'm going to have 7.4 and 7.1. And pay attention to this edge right here if I go over it anti-clockwise. You can see that it increases the red if I go anti-clockwise. And that's because the ranges are not the same if you go clockwise or anti-clockwise. So make sure that you rotate both ways, both when you're calibrating and when you're checking circularity, because then you're accounting for the worst case scenarios.
but also specifically make sure that both ranges are good clockwise and anti-clockwise. Now that's it for the three major features that I wanted to show. And a previous update a while ago, they also added the battery percentage, so that's a nice touch. And they also added some more information about the controller as well. Um, but that's more technical, and if you're just using the website to calibrate, you don't really need that. And then uh, the next thing that I want to show is, of course, the DualSense Edge. So this website now also supports the DualSense Edge controller right here. And when you first connect it, you will see this pop up and it's saying that it is an experimental feature because calibrating the joysticks are a bit more complicated compared to your ordinary DualSense. You need to take apart the joystick module and you need to solder a wire from one point to another on its PCB. I'll show this in a future installation video where I replace the joysticks for TMR and I will also be soldering the wire. There are various methods to do that and I also want to experiment with like what if you don't have a soldering iron or what if you cannot solder. So I want to experiment with different ways how you can calibrate the joysticks. I'm going to be posting the video soon so if you're interested hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. And with that thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.